Hey everyone, this is Chris from Third Coast Craftsman and in this video I'm finally going to install all the window trim in my shop and I'm going to show you a better method for installing window trim where you'll build the trim and put it together first and then install it in the window opening. I'm going to show you a really cool trick with pan head screws that get you to line up everything nice and easy and perfect every time and even though these windows are in my wood shop the techniques are the exact same for a house and don't worry you don't need a full wood shop to do these. Stick around and I'll show you how. All right, so first I wanna go over some window anatomy terms before we start building this so you know what pieces I'm talking about when we start building this thing. So we'll start on the inside. Now on a craftsman style window treatment like this, the inside panels are called the inside jams or the side jams. And then there's the head jam up there. And then this bottom piece is called the stool. And next on the outside faces, these are called the side casings. And then up above, you have the cross head trim, head casing, and cap trim. And then this bottom front face piece is called the apron. Now, in a lot of new construction homes where they're just doing mitered edges, you would just call pretty much everything on the inside the jam or jam extensions and all the face pieces called the casings. Now also on the outside edges of the stools, these are called the horns, these little pieces that extend past that your side casings sit on top of. So we're gonna build these over on a table and then I'm gonna bring almost the entire assembly and install it all at once except for the head casing assembly. We'll put that on at the end. All right, so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna measure out our pieces here. So first we wanna figure out our reveal. I have a piece of scrap of three quarter inch chair that we're gonna be using. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna reference this outside white edge of this trim. And that's gonna be where the outside edge of my casing and jams and everything line up with. And that'll give me, you know, about an inch of reveal on the window, which I think is gonna look nice and it's gonna be really easy to reference that and use that as our measurement. So what I'm gonna do is first measure across the bottom of the width I'm going from the white part of this window to the white part of this window, and that is 59 and 7 eighths. Now you could also do, you know, to the black part of the trim, but just usually you'll be able to pick a edge of your window and just reference that. The window should be installed nice and square. The window itself is square, so it's really easy to just reference that. So I got 59 and 7 eighths, and that's gonna be the inside edge of my stool down here. Now my stool is gonna be wider than the, the side jams. So the side jams, that puts me at seven and a half inches. That's gonna be the width of my side jams and my head jam. But for my stool, I have that horn that in an extent, in extends past, and I'm gonna go an uh, inch and three quarters on that. So that's gonna end up giving me nine and a quarter. So my stool is gonna be nine and a quarter. And the inside edge is 58, 59 and seven eighths, and I'm going six inches past on each side. So I'm gonna add the horn width to the inside edge. Let's so see, do a little bit of math here. Another 12 inches to 59 and seven eighths. So that's gonna be 71 and seven eighths. Okay, so I'm gonna measure for the side jams now. Again, I'm going from the outside edge of this window, which is 47 and 7 eighths, and I need to subtract an inch and a half, which is two thicknesses. So you have the head jam and your stool. So I need to subtract that distance because my side jams are gonna sit in between those two. So subtracting an inch and a half will give me 46 and 3 eighths for my side jams. I'm making my trim out of cherry and most of it is from some cherry logs that I had milled up several years ago. I have six windows and two doors to do in my shop so I'm going to go ahead and cut all my pieces now and if you want to make your trim out of a nice hardwood like cherry maple or oak I would recommend getting that lumber from an actual hardwood dealer and not a lumber yard or big box store. You're going to pay three to five times more for hardwoods at those places. I actually did calculate it out and it's quite a bit more expensive. I made a really nice video on buying lumber from a hardwood dealer. So if you go that route, make sure you give that video a watch first. It'll help demystify going into a hardwood dealer and help you out a lot. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Now, if you plan on painting your trim, the lumber yards and big box stores are going to be just fine. And I'd recommend using a pre-primed pine 
not an MDF because MDF is gonna swell and fall apart when it gets wet. And if you accidentally leave a window open when it rains, guess what? So stick with pine on window trim if you're gonna be painting it. All right, since I had six identical windows, I went ahead and batched out all my parts. Took a long time. But what I have over here is I have six head jams, six pairs of side jams, six aprons, six head casings. And you can see here, I was doing some wood filler, trying to utilize the lumber I had. I had a lot of uh, cherry that I actually milled up myself, and there was a lot of cracks and imperfections in it. So I experimented around with this timber mate. I used um, a combination of walnut and ebony and mixed those together to get like a dark filler. And I really liked it. I liked it more than just the walnut. So, and you can see I put some oil on here to see how it finished and it looks really good. So I filled all these knots. I got to sand everything still. And then I need to clean up the edges on everything. I'll use a hand plane to clean up the edges and sand the faces and wood fillers. Then I'm gonna lay out and cut the horns in my stool boards. I'm just gonna use a circular saw for this, taking my time and cutting accurately, and then I'll finish my cuts using a Japanese saw. Now I'm going to assemble my jams, stool, and side casings here on a flat table. Doing it on a flat surface like this makes it so much easier to get nice tight joints rather than trying to do this piece by piece in the window opening. I'm gonna add a little wood glue between the joints here and then brad nail them together. Then I'm gonna drill some pilot holes and use some trim screws to screw and secure the pieces together. The screws along with the wood glue are gonna make for a super strong joint. A wet toothbrush or plastic bristle brush work great for cleaning up glue squeeze out. All right, so I wanted to give you a quick little brad nailer tip. So the brad nails come in strips like this and they actually have a chisel point because of how they're manufactured. And because of that, they have a tendency to shoot right or left out of the gun, depending on what they hit in the wood. So it's really important when you're brad nailing something together, this is your board that you're ultimately nailing through this board into this board. If you hold your brad nailer the right or wrong way, you can have your brads shoot out the side into your show face. So you don't wanna do that. And in order to prevent that, you wanna hold your brad nailer perpendicular, so at a 90 degrees to the board underneath. Because the brads will shoot this way, right or left, they'll deflect right or left out of the brad nailer. So if you hold it this direction and nail down, you'll avoid that. So remember, keep your brad nailer perpendicular to the board underneath. Next, I'm gonna mark some reference lines a quarter inch from the inside edge of the jams. I'll line my side and head casings up to these lines to create a nice reveal edge. Again, you can see how my nailer is perpendicular to the board underneath so that if the brads do deflect, they'll deflect right or left in the same direction of the board underneath and not blow out into the show face. Now, of course, if the brad hits a really hard knot or something, it still can potentially force the brad through the show face, even if you're holding the nailer correctly. So try to avoid shooting brads into hard things like knots and you'll be just fine. All right, so I have all six of these window trim assemblies done. I don't have the top casings or the aprons mounted on yet. I'll do that after I mount those into the window openings, but I do have the side casings on and those will just help line up the jams inside the window openings properly. 
And I'm going to finish these first. I'm going to use Danish oil. I'm, I'm going to finish the back sides as well with a uh, solid hardwood like that, especially wide pieces. You want to make sure you finish or coat both sides equally so that moisture doesn't leave at different rates from one face or the other, causing warpage or bowing or checking or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I also, I built my head casing assemblies. So you have the uh, head casing, the cap trim, cross head strip. And I just laid those out on a flat piece of work surface and just brad nailed the, the top and bottom piece. Really easy. I think I forgot to uh, film that. Have my door assembly, just my, my door jams ready to go I'm back over there in that door opening. Now I want to show you real quick a cool little way that we are going to mount these in these window openings. So I'm using pan head screws and these uh, will get mounted in pairs. I'll do three along the side, four along the bottom. And you remember we measured our outside of our window jams measurements to this white part of the, the window here. So I'm gonna screw these pan head screws so that they're flush with the white part of that window trim all the way around. And then my whole assembly should just slide in there nice and even. I'm gonna build a little jig out of this scrap piece of wood. I can rest it against the inside of the frame like that and I'll have little blocks that come out level with the white outside edge, and then I'll, I'll be able to see if my screws are perfectly lined up and square. So it should make it real nice and easy to go together. So let's get working on that. All right, now I can use this little guide to see how close I am. You can see this back one. I need to screw it in a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more. That's good. Looks like this front one. I need to come back out a little bit. See how nice that little jig works. Now if for whatever reason your measurements were off a little and the trim is a little too tight or too loose, it'll be pretty obvious and it's very easy for you to then take the trim back out, tighten or loosen the screws and put it back in for a perfect fit. All right, so at the beginning of the video, I explained how we came up with our jam measurements and our stool measurements. Now I wanna explain the outer side casings and how it came up with those. The side casings are really easy. You essentially just take the length of the jams and add a quarter inch because the bottom of the side casing is resting flat on the stool down here, and then there's a quarter inch reveal at the top. So, that's really easy, just add a quarter inch, and a lot of this is personal preference. I went with a four inch wide side casing. Now for the apron, again, I just used a four inch wide piece, and I just kept it about an inch and a half narrower than the stool on each side. So just take your stool length 
and subtract three inches at about a 10 degree angle to the cut. And that's a nice looking apron, really easy. All right, so for the head case assembly, and again, you can get as elaborate or as crazy as you want. We'll just explain what I did. You have your cross head strip again, your head casing and your cap trim. Now my cross head strip is an inch wide and it's half inch thick. That way it sticks about a quarter inch proud of my side casings and my head casing gives that nice little shadow line and reveal. My head casing is five inches wide by three quarter inches thick. And my cap trim is a three quarter inch thick strip that's one and a half inches wide so that it sticks out a little bit more proud than both of these. Gives a really nice look. Now in order to get my lengths on these, after I add my side casings, I can measure across that width there, get a measurement, and then for my cross head strip here, I went an inch proud. For my half, for my head casing, I went three quarter inches on each side. And for my cap trim, I went about another quarter inch proud of that. So an inch and a quarter on each side. So just take that. So this piece is gonna be two inches wider than that measurement. This piece is gonna be an inch and a half wider than that measurement. And this piece is gonna be two and a quarter inches wide. Well, everyone, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few things and now feel confident and able to install some really nice window trim for your windows. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one, which is probably gonna be a shop tour now that I have all my windows done and the shop looks great.